Hey, and we are back with the round table right now. Roland Martin, excuse me. I'm joined here by Matthew Dowd and Cokie Roberts from ABC. Uh, former Obama Treasury official Stephen Ratner. You heard him. News One Now host and energy editor Roland Martin. Republican strategist CNBC contributor Sarah Fagan. Welcome to all of you. A lot to talk about here, Matthew Dowd. And I want to start out with that uh, going in political question. Big victory for the White House and the Republicans this week. Will it look like a victory? in 2018. Well, I think there's a difference between passing a bill and a victory. And I, I think those are two separate things in this. I, I mean, I'm going to give Donald Trump, I'm going to say he's right about something. Donald Trump is right that our health care system is broken, and he's right that something needs to be done. But something needs to be done both on affordability and access. All of us have personal stories in all of this. I have a brother who's a doctor, a sister who's a doctor. I was on the board of a charity hospital, Catholic charity hospital, and I had two daughters that were in the hospital for nine months cost $2 million in their care in this. And I think until we fundamentally address, and this bill doesn't do it, it actually makes affordability worse and access worse in, in this, until we address those fundamental concerns, the American public's gonna keep crying about this. You know, this question of a victory, though, uh, I, I was struck by Paul Ryan this morning saying, I'm proud of this. That, that could be an ad against him. Because the fact is that, uh, that, yes, they feel very good that they kept their promise, as he kept saying. And their campaign uh, chairman says, uh, you know, we, we need to keep our base excited in an off-year election. Keeping your base excited at the expense of people losing their health care, I don't think works well politically. This fires up both bases, no doubt. And I think one of the things that has not gotten as much coverage in this debate over the last week is the fact that the Republican base demanded this. Right. And they demanded it for very good reasons. And Paul Ryan pointed them out, which is Obamacare was failing. And so we can talk all we want about people with pre-existing conditions or access to health care. But if there's no health care system in entire states, essentially, uh, these are all uh, mute arguments because it doesn't exist. And so something has to get done. I heard very little between Senator Collins and Speaker Ryan that was incompatible. Uh, very little. Kidding? No, no. <laughs> no, if you go back and read the transcripts of those interviews, there was only really one disagreement. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll take, hold on a second. Yeah. I'll, I'll take it that they were both, they were careful uh, yeah. about that. But if you read between the lines, and Senator Collins she is calling for a, a bipartisan yeah, yeah. health care plan and, and, and more She's, tax credits and, and no defunding of Planned Parenthood, right. that's a pretty big and difference. Also, um, look, I think there's a couple things here. I think first of all, from the standpoint of the Republicans, uh, this could be tough electorally. If you look at the polls, Obamacare, in part thanks to this debate, now polls at a 54% approval rating. This bill polls at a 17% approval rating. So I think Americans do have concerns. This thing about pre-existing conditions, which is important but not the most important uh, negative change they're making in this bill, has caught a national wave. There is an incredible... Mm -hmm. I did one tweet that got 29,000 retweets about pre-existing conditions. I've never had a response Everybody. like that. Everybody now, what the Democrats have to worry about, however, is that there are problems with the ACA. There are insurance companies dropping out. Some of those are at the, uh, some of those are the doings of this administration, right. which has pulled advertising, right. which has done other things to, to discourage people from signing up and discourage insurance companies. Some of it is stuff that should and can be fixed if you had legislative support, which it's we don't have. George, George, but it's something the, the Democrats have to worry about. For, forget these bases. The Affordable <laughs> Care Act, fit, uh, bankruptcies, fit down 50% largely because of the Affordable Care Act. And if I'm the AARP and the American Lung Association and the American Diabetes Association, Cancer Association, March of Dimes, you know what I'm doing? I'm holding town halls right. in those congressional districts saying, we're going to tell you actually what's in this bill, how it impacts you. The top no, no, no. Ten, 10 states Trump won are going to be hurt the most by this and, House and GOP I, bill. I, you know, tell when, that to the base. When you really dig down into it, it gets worse and worse. Because the fact is, is that, you know, Paul Ryan says, yes, we are going to cover these pre-existing conditions if you don't lose your coverage. And this bill says that there's no penalty for employers dropping their coverage. The, so they can drop coverage of people. You lose your coverage. Again, everybody needs to take a, a, a deep breath on, on this, which is that we are through one part of the process. Yeah, but the, they the voted Senate, for it. They voted for it. It's not the final vote that they're going to take. <laughs> And what you heard out of uh, Speaker Ryan is that he's looking for the Senate to make improvements. What you heard out of Senator Collins is that the Senate is going to make improvements. There's, there's but, 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 the problem with this is, is it's, it's take the pottery barn rule. Yeah. If you voted for it, you right. own it. And it doesn't matter if the Senate fixes right. this. The problem politically for the House no, now, I, I, and a bill now that the majority, vast majority of the American public does not want. T tell us the Republicans need to lock arms with what Speaker Ryan said today, which is that 
if you don't have a health care system that's functioning, having one that is functioning, even if imperfect, is far better than one that is yes. Sarah, 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 tell, tell somebody, Sarah, please, tell somebody with a pre-existing condition to take a breath when they're fighting for their last breath. No, 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 no. So, and when you say, when you say leave it, when you, when you say leave it, put them in the dark. When you say leave it up to the states, we saw what happened when these states did not expand Medicaid. When you saw the rural hospitals shut down in North Carolina, in Louisiana, in Mississippi, and I'm telling you right now, whether you are white and broke, black and broke, you live in rural America, you should be scared to death of this bill. The one thing we know about this bill is $880 million billion dollars is coming out of Medicaid. Medicaid. Something like $600 billion is coming out of the subsidies. The CBO has scored this as costing 24 million people their health insurance. That number won't be right. Maybe it's 22, maybe it's 26, maybe it's 18. It's a huge number. I don't see how Speaker Ryan can say mm -hmm. that his bill is fixing a problem. Also, they're well, overstating this business that the health care system is broke. It's not so broke. And the fact is that the Medicaid expansion has really helped health care well, in this country. It, 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 hold on, though. In the meantime, though, it, it wasn't broke before, but we do have insurance companies now saying they're seeing increasing losses with all the uncertainty. Some are. Some others, like Anthem, it, are saying uh, they're getting But the well. longer George, this debate is, goes it, on, the well, more uncertainty true. there is. The health care yeah. system has been broken for more than 20 years, and it was broke before ACA, and it's broke after ACA. And this fix, it's like going to a sick patient and giving them an experimental treatment and many experimental treatments hurt the patient H H A H A H C A is going to hurt the patient to me there no side is fundamentally addressing and we need to actually ask the question is should we go to a single payer system right. because affordability hasn't been fixed by this or ACA and accessibility that is, is a, that is a huge, huge question. It's not on the table when you've got a Republican House, a Republican yes. Senate, okay. and, and the White House. But I, I want to bring one question, though, to Sarah, to Sarah Fagan right here, because it seemed from what you were saying there that now that the House has passed something, it is imperative that the Senate pass something that the House can then pass again and the President can sign. Yeah, on that we absolutely agree. <laughs> and the, and, the, and I, I don't disagree with my colleagues up here on the politics of this. The politics for Republicans are, at this moment, pretty dicey. But something needs to get through the Senate that improves what, on what the House did. And I think Ted Cruz is going to play an absolutely critical role in this mm -hmm. because the Freedom Caucus members in the House are going to watch what he does and how he interacts in this uh, legislative fight. And if they can come together and get something done that improves, uh, health care in this country. Not, but how do you improve no, terrible? No, but but how do you improve terrible? You know that it's terrible. This, 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 this bill is terrible. One, one at a time. It is, it if, is you do, if you do something that makes Ted Cruz happy, improves it in his direction, <laughs> you're going to lose Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, right. Rob Portman, That's not all those moderates. That's not necessarily true. But, 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 but Ted, let me pick up on Roland's point, though, though, right there. You're saying you can't improve terrible. Let's say, let's yeah. say you're right. Let's say they come together with something that adds money back to Medicaid, puts some more money in, into the subsidies. Still, CBO comes back and says, okay, it's 18, it's 20 million, 20 million people mm -hmm. who lose their health insurance. Well, Is that something that's defensible? Uh, CBO, first of all, has been very good on the math. They have not been so good in history on reporting on the numbers of people who do or do not have coverage. But, but, but politically, you know, they're going to have to do something, whether it's a grandfather or something um, that does make sure that people who have coverage now continue to have coverage and have good coverage. But that, that, that is the Donald ultimate Trump, question. Donald, That's the question that yeah. If I were President a Democratic Obama. strategist, I would be focusing all my attention on governors and because the House is dicey in terms of the mm -hmm. districts, and the states are going to have to enact this stuff. And George, I think, and George, they, George they, the they, piece. you saw the Oregon governor early this week say this is going to leave a 2.8 billion dollar hole in their budgets. To your point, Koki, when these governors all of a sudden right. realize that if this bill becomes law, how it's going to impact them, they might have to raise taxes. Trust me, the base won't be so happy. George, <laughs> George to me, substantial, substantively, this bill is bad. Yeah. Politically, it's really bad. And so if you take a combination of this bad bill, which we've all seen what happened in 2010 with Donald Trump's approval ratings, the, the odds of the Democrats taking back the House are more than 50 50 today, which nobody thought you know, that was, was true before the that. Uh, I gotta say, we're, we're just about out of time. I just want to ask you yeah. all quickly a yes or no question. Uh, does President Trump sign a health care bill this year? No. Yes. No. Yes. No. I think I'm a no, too. We'll see, though. <laughs>